Bless you, everyone. Good morning, everybody. It's a, it's a really good morning for Wesley. <laughs> so, so, Wesley, thank you again for waking up. You'd be glad to know this. There's more in my house here, but we've got the Passion for Souls. We're waiting to hear about Passion for Souls and um, the things you the things you kind of do in ministry. This has been this is the this is Missions Week, and it, uh, you are the last one to, to share this week in there. I'm sure, as, as, God, as the Lord says, from glory to glory, we should go. So I pray that, you know, what we hear today will really stir our hearts, stir our souls, and and realize that we serve a limitless God Amen. who 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 will be able to just, we'll just look, look at things that we, the way we don't look at it. You know, we don't we don't put caps on ourselves. We put caps on ourselves as people. The Lord doesn't. And we should have that open mind and open heart. Wesley, yeah, please come in, sir. Please come in. Amen. Praise God. Well, good morning to all of you. Um, not so early morning for 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 everyone, but but good morning <laughs> to all of you, Rami and the entire family, and and um, lovely people who have we have grown to to really appreciate and love and so much um, in such a short short space of time. And you know, I, I, we thank God for for technology. But more than anything else, when we speak and when we when we share with you all, um, it is a, it is such a great testimony of of this the, the 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 power of the Spirit of God to bring unity and and um, we could be so far away, so many different time zones and languages and cultures, but speak the same language um, without ever um, having met before, and that's a testimony of of the unity that the spirit of the lord brings and so um god bless all of you and it's always a pleasure to be here today um today this morning i have i have one of our um leaders with us the uh, the other one is supposed to come as well um, um pastor kurt brown so i, I wanna i wanna have him to, sh to 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 share part of what we're gonna be doing because um I want to really share some 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 stories with you all. Um, I want to share some stories with you all of the beginnings of our of our ministry, and and what the Lord what the Lord did. Um, at, at Pastor Kevin is supposed to be there as well. I don't think he has come on as yet. Um, and so I don't have Natalia with me this morning. I I, I allowed her to rest a little bit because we have been <laughs> we have been on twenty one days of um of all day long and today we start we 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 will be going on until um directly from here on so it will be like about five hours so i love so i i um, allow her to take a little a little um a little rest this morning but um um i did that especially because um pastor brown i wanted him to share with us as well because from the beginnings of the ministry there are some key things that the Lord placed in our heart and the Lord, the Lord ministered to us as, um, as we were in the beginnings and, and is what is, is what I want to be able to impart and, and, tr and, and transmit to you all today. And so I just want us to worship the Lord and give him thanks and give him praise before we start. Is that all right? Before we do anything, um, if we could just worship and glorify his name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we exalt your name, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus, <clears throat> because you are right here in the midst of us. You are right here, right now, Lord Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for every, every person who is connected this morning, oh Lord Father. I pray that you open their hearts, open their minds, open their spirits, oh Lord Jesus, to receive everything that you want to say today in the mighty name of Jesus we just love you Lord we just exalt you Lord we just thank you Lord Jesus because with without you we can do nothing God 
Your word says that we can't even bear fruit without you if we are disconnected from the vine. Oh Lord Jesus, connect us today. And we would never be disconnected, oh God. We would never, never, never be disconnected, oh Lord Father, in the name of Jesus. In whatever part of the globe that we are, your spirit, oh Lord Father, is going to keep us connected. Fill us with passion for your people, O oh Lord. Fill us with passion for souls. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. We exalt your name. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Just allow his presence to just minister to you and prepare the ground of your heart. Trust in the Lord. With all your heart and lean not to thy own understanding in all your ways, acknowledge him, he shall direct your path. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all your Spirit, Lord, keep us connected to your vine, oh God. And fill us, oh Lord Jesus, with your spirit and empower us to do everything that you call us to do, oh Lord Jesus. I pray that a burden, a passion for souls would fill our lives today. In Jesus' mighty name, oh God, we would see people as you see people, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> we give him praise and thanks this morning once again. Hallelujah. And so again, again, a, a privilege and a pleasure to be here with, with all of you. And, um, you know, <clears throat> the, the name of our, our, our ministry is Passion for Souls, right? And um, within the name of the ministry, you know, when my brother, Kevin and myself, we, we left our jobs in 2004 and we... <clears throat> We went to, we went to Venezuela by faith you know we had never preached before we had never um, we had never really done much ministry in in terms of of never laid hands on anybody we never um, 
we 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 used to we were just like um we would just sit in church really <laughs> i used to play the guitar and and um and that was it and so um the lord had been speaking speaking to us about missions and and obviously you know really missions is is one of the one of the callings that many of us we run from right we run from from missions and so we don't really want to hear much about leaving our, our comfort zone and all of that. And so we, um, I, I wasn't any different. I was running from missions as well. I didn't want to, to hear about leaving my job or leaving my comfort zone. And, um, and, it, and, and uh, amazingly, we, 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 uh, the Lord was, um, was blessing me on my workplace as well. I had my own business and, um, and I got a promotion on my job and, and, and all of that. And, and the Lord was just opening doors. And in the midst of it, you know, I'm sit, I, I remember sitting in my office and, um, and looking at the walls, looking at the walls and asking myself, um, would, this be, um, would this be my life? Until I'm old, would I be um, looking at these walls every single day? Would I be in this office all the time? And um, and while I'm there, and, and 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 you know, it's a sense of accomplishment as well, because my office, uh, I was working for 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 it at that at that time it was the second largest um, group of companies in the Caribbean. No, it is the largest, right? Um, group of companies in in the entire caribbean and my office was right next to the the ceo of the of the of the the company i didn't have a high position but the lord positioned me there um in in, in that place and in, 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 in right there and, and so um it was not an easy decision to take at all at all at all it was not an easy decision and <clears throat> i didn't even and the lord was speaking to me about venezuela and I didn't really, I didn't really even like Venezuela. I didn't even like Spanish. I didn't want to even speak Spanish, right? <laughs> I didn't want to speak Spanish at all. And so <clears throat> making the decision, it was the Lord spoke to me very clearly in a dream. And I decided to respond to the call. And you know, sometimes I want you to know that we in ourselves, we don't really have passion for souls in ourselves, you know. I want you to know that, that our passion comes from him. And the more we are in his presence, we, he downloads his passion upon us. And we, be, we get a little glimpse of, of, of his heart. And as we see his heart, it's like when God called Moses, God called Moses. Moses, he, he was concerned about, about his people, yes. But I want you to know that a concern for souls it's different from a passion for souls. It's, it's completely different. And so many of us, we are, we are affected by what we see and we are concerned about people. We are concerned when we hear the, the suffering and we see people um, dying and, we are, and, and sometimes it hurts us. But a passion comes from God and we don't have it naturally. We don't really have that passion naturally. We, we are concerned and we look around and, and all of that. And, 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 and we want to do something. We want to do something that, that would, would really bring some kind of change to the world. But <clears throat> I remember I didn't really, wasn't really concerned, uh, wasn't really passionate too much about, about Venezuela and about the people that were lost there and really have that burden and, but but it started with responding to the call and this is where it's where it starts when we respond to him we respond to him um after years now after years of of, <laughs> of of fighting him years of no this is this is this is what i'm going after i was a, a young man uh, at that time probably around 20, 24 25 years old and um, I am, well, I'm still young, eh? I'm still young, not that young, but I'm still young. <laughs> and um, I was trying, I was saving to, 
saving my money to, to buy a piece of land. And at the same time, I'm looking at the price of land in Trinidad just going up and going up and going up. And my savings is not increasing to meet the, the, the rising price of land. And so as a, as, a, as a young man, one of our, most of us, this should be our goals, right? We want to provide for our family and we want to have property. We want to have things that we can give to our family and leave an inheritance for our family and all of that. And, and that's great and, and, and awesome. And so I'm a young man, I'm, I'm, I'm saving my money and I'm trying to get work towards my goals. My business is doing well and the job is, is well. And so in the midst of this, God is saying, I want you to leave this, right? And so I tell you, it was not easy. And, and, and the first thing that happened when, when I, I left my job and I was heading to, to go to Venezuela with my brother, um, the first thing that happened was that, um, I had a, I had a vehicle that, I, that, that it wasn't the best of vehicle. It wasn't a, a new vehicle. It was, and I was trying to get it sold and I couldn't get it sold. And, um, so I had the date set to leave and, and, and it was on the boat. It wasn't by, by plane. It was on a boat because we were trying, that is very close to Venezuela and we were going on this boat. And I had my tickets with my brother. We had our tickets to go. We were going by faith. We, we, my brother could speak a little Spanish. I didn't really know anything. And I'm going to share. And I want. And I have, as you see, Pastor Kurt Brown, who is here. I, I, he, I, I'm going to ask him to share at a certain point because there, there's something that I want us to, 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 to minister to you because none of us knew Spanish, right? And and um and, and I'm going and and I know that um the same the what the lord did in my life he also did it in 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 his life as well and and so i'm gonna have him share his part a little later on right and um <clears throat> and so i'm going we are organizing to go to venezuela and we have the date set and one of the leaders of the the then organization that that, that i was a part of um, saw me and Kevin and said to us, um, where are you two, you two young men, um, where you all are going? Um, and, and he said to us, I want you, I want us, I want to find out who you are first before, before you go out in, in the mission field. So wait a, about a week. And so we want to wait a week and we already have our tickets, but the tickets, you could extend it. And so we waited that week in obedience in that week, someone called me, um, and said, um, I have someone who wants to, to buy a car, but they say they don't have money. And um, they want to, they will, they will, they will give you a piece of property for your car. So I said, property, nobody is going to give me property for that car, you know, and, and, and I, I thought it might have some kind of thing that's not right about our property. So I went and picked them up in the car and I, we drove together, the owner of the land, and we drove up to the piece of land. And when I saw the piece of land, I was, I didn't believe that, it, that, you know, everything was right with this piece of land. Probably they owe taxes or they have something. And so I, I looked at piece of land is a beautiful piece of land, beautiful, beautiful piece of land, about 2,500 square meters of land. And, um, and I, 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 and I looked at it, I said, all right, I, let me go. I'll go to the government, um, the, the, the department that, that does the taxes. And I did a search on the land. Everything was legal. All the taxes were paid. And I, and, and, um, I signed over the car to him. He signed over the land to me and we made that, that exchange. And I, and within that week that we remained, the Lord gave me the deed for that piece of land. And this was the first time I ever experienced divine provision. It was a piece of land that was worth probably about 10 times what the car is worth, or more, probably more. <laughs> probably worth about 10 times what the car was worth. And it was something that I'd been working for, for to, trying to save money for, for, for years. I'm trying to save money. And it was part of one of the reasons why I'm saying, Lord, I'm going to, I'm going to, give up my job i'm gonna give up all these things and how am i gonna be provide for my family how am i gonna provide how am i gonna do all these things and it was and that week that we remained before we went to venezuela god literally took a piece of land property which i still own today 
and placed it in my hands uh, that I couldn't even think about purchasing. I couldn't even think about purchasing that. But the Lord was showing me and sh was giving me evidence and saying, you know what? I'm going to provide for all of your needs when you do what I'm telling you to do. And every time there is a response to, to, to God's voice, we never lose. We ne he is no man's debtor. Whatever we give, we give up for him. He is more than able to give us much more. I'm not, ju I'm not just talking about um, finances or, or, or material things. Um, some years later, um, the Lord called me to go. Now, I was used to go and come to Venezuela on short-term missions. And in 2008, now, the Lord called me to go um, to go and, and, and live there for two years. And um, I remember when I got saved, I was 12 years old when I got saved and um, in 1991. And none of my family was saved. None of my family, my parents were not saved, um, none of them. And they were actually, they had prohibited me to go from going to church. There was a lot of persecution. There was all of that. I was. I was um, not allowed to go to church, and and in the midst of of, of this, um, the Lord just 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 um, he had me praying and, and praying for them and, and and that burden for for them, but I didn't see anybody get saved at all in my family. Ten years had passed now. I'm a young man and and, and 22 years old, and nobody still had just gotten saved. My brother got saved after 10 years of praying for my family. And now after that, they started to open up to the gospel and they wanted to hear about the gospel and, and all of that, but they, they weren't, weren't saved as yet. And then now the Lord calls me to go and live in Venezuela, all right? And so I'm saying to God, Lord, how am I gonna go there? And they are now, my family is now responding to the gospel. I, I, I need to be there for them to make sure that they are, that they are that they are walking in, on that path, and that I could take them to church, and that I could I could make sure that this happens. If I leave, what is going to happen to them? And God said to me, "You take care of my business, and I will deal with your business." And the Lord said that to me, and uh, and I left for the mission field again in 20, 2008. And uh, when I went within the first year, I saw my mother give her life to the Lord. I saw all my sisters give my, of my, my, well, one of them had already given their lives to the Lord and the other three, my nieces and, um, and so many other family members, immediate family members, they all just give their life to Christ one after the next. And, um, and so I, I, again, I realized that response to the gospel response to the call, God just takes care of the things that 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 hold us back from doing what what we what He's calling us to do. Don't you don't 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 for, for not for a moment believe that you are gonna do His work and He is gonna leave um, your your stuff there un, uncared for your family members and all of that. The, I, I tell you when you invest your life in him in whatever way possible whatever way that he's requiring of you not not everybody he says i want you to 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 leave everything and go to the corners of the earth they are different i want you to know that the lord has called us in so many different ways all of us every single one of us god has a plan for your life a purpose for your life and 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 and, and he wants us to respond to him right and so I remember um, now that moving along a little later, now in 2015, now my wife and I went to, to the Amazon and we began a church there. And I'm, later on, I'm going to show you some, some, uh, some videos of what the Lord did there. But uh, after we came back, we, the Lord called us to go to Venezuela again. And I went with Pastor Brown, who is here. No, he didn't. He was just like myself. He, at that time, he didn't know Spanish. He didn't know Spanish. And so we went together. And this was in the time now when a lot of the 
a lot of um, violence was we was escalating in Venezuela. There was, it was, a lot of violence was ex escalating in 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 the land, and and so it wasn't really a safe place to go at all. It was not a safe place to go, and 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 we went there. We were going to call churches together to pray to pray together. And we had this plan that we're gonna go from here and we're gonna go there and we're gonna do this and we're gonna do that. And um, and in, in, in the midst of this, um, we, we, the Lord, we, we arrived there and the Lord required of us to enter into prayer and fasting for Venezuela, All right? Now, some years before, when we started the ministry in 2006, passion for souls. The Lord called me to go to Venezuela by myself, not with my brother Kevin, no, by myself. And when I went there, um, I, I, I still had not preached before. Eh? I was used was going and learning Spanish and I had not preached the gospel um, because I didn't know Spanish. And so I'm trying to learn Spanish and um, my brother would be the one to interpret for me. And, and my Spanish was, was just hello, hola, um god bless you and it wasn't wasn't was very limited and so this is the first time i'm going by myself and as i arrived there the pastor of the church says to me you will preach tonight i said I'll preach tonight <laughs> i am I, um, I i i with, with my little spanish i understood what he is saying but I did not agree with, I was not in agreement with him. And so I told him, I said, no, I cannot preach. I cannot preach tonight because there's no interpreter for me. And, um, and so he said, okay, that night, the Lord gave me a word. And the Lord gave me a word for, for the church. I said, Lord, if, if you have given me this word, you'll have to give me the Spanish to preach it. And so I told the pastor the next day, I'm going to preach. And <laughs> uh, that night I went, took the step of faith, and I stood up uh, uh, before the church, and no interpreter anywhere in sight. And uh, I opened my mouth, and the Spirit of the Lord filled my mouth with Spanish. I shared the word for about 25 minutes in Spanish. And people were weeping and at the altar, people were just broken and being ministered to and the spirit of the Lord was just there in the place. <laughs> and, um, and, 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 and since that day, I've never stopped speaking Spanish. I've never stopped speaking Spanish since that day. The Lord did a supernatural, a supernatural work that day and that was in 2005 i know i'm going from this year to that year to this year right but it's i want you to know there's a is so much that i want to share that i want to pull out some of the some of the most important um highlights of of, of the beginnings of of the ministry and that this moment in 2005 we were getting ready to start passion for souls the ministry would have been starting in 2006 and um, as the spirit of the Lord um, came upon me in that, on, 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 in that church that day, um, something happened that was, was, I tell you, there was a, not just the language no. And this is what I wanna zero in on. It was not just the language. It was a passion and a burden for the people that came. And, and so I, I want you to, when you look at in Acts chapter two, when the spirit of the Lord came upon the apostles, you know, it, they were, they were, it was not just, they were just not just speaking in tongues, right? They were, they were, they were filled with passion for the people. You know, they were filled with a burden for the people and they were filled with the power of the Holy Spirit as well to do the work. And this is why I said in the beginning, we in ourselves, we don't carry that passion. We may have a concern and, 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 and we may feel something for the people in our humanity. We don't want to see people suffer and all of that. But there is something about a passion for souls that is that when it comes from him, when it when he downloads what he feels, we be, our heart becomes like this. 
our heart begins to to just love his people so much and just want we we don't want to see them um perish and we want to see people set free and so that day this is what took place and so the lord birthed in in, in my spirit in that uh, uh, when when that happened the lord birthed in my spirit to begin to take other missionaries and believe god to ignite a passion in their hearts as well and so i started to organize the first trip of passion for souls after this happened and um it was not easy we i i got sick for three months i couldn't come out of bed and um right up onto the trip that we were having when we started the ministry in april 2006 right right up until that time our ministry just celebrated 15 years and i was i was i, I was sick and uh, but, but the lord healed me just a week before the trip we were determined that the trip would continue the mission would continue and and and, and we started that trip that, that um that mission with that trip and we had about nine missionaries who went to venezuela and um when we went there i tell you it was just it was just none of we were i went with an unexperienced team just like myself i was i didn't have experience at all and um these people they, they they had never laid hands on people before they had never seen anybody get healed before they had most of them none ever preached before and um, i took this team of persons with myself they would they, and um and when we went to preach at a campsite on a crusade and, and when they lay hands on people and they see people being baptized with the holy spirit and being filled and for it was like somebody just fell on the ground and they were looking they were like they were like like what is this taking place but it was the spirit of the lord that was that was um was birthing something birthing something and the key word what the lord said to me when he told me to take that team as i had asked him a question and say lord why is it that so many people are not concerned about the work of missions and the lord said to me because they don't have a passion for souls and this is where the name of the ministry came from. And so the Lord said, said to me and gave me directives to, to ignite a passion in the hearts of his people through encounters with him. And this is why we are so much focused, not just on the work, not just on, on the strategies or, 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 or all of that, but we are focused on encounters with God and intimacy with God because out of that, when he puts his passion upon you 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 will say yes to him and you wouldn't just say yes to him and go on and try to do it in your own strength but as his burden and the burden this is my prayer even for for you right now all of us connected here that he's going to ignite a passion for souls that goes beyond a concern for souls it goes into our deep which would cause you and i to travail and believe God for our loved ones, our family members. We believe God that they would come to know Jesus. They would come to know Jesus. And, 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 and um, it is something that is imparted to us when we are in his presence. And so this was how the ministry was birthed. And, and, and um, I wanna give Pastor Brown to share, even, even right now, I wanna give you the opportunity to share a little bit of your experience because after this, we went on a mission together his family and my family we went to venezuela in 2015. when we went there believe in god in the midst of what the violence that is taking place the lord sent us sent us there we thought in our minds in our, our in our minds we thought we're gonna rent a bus and we're gonna go from this city to that city to the other city we we went there in our zeal thinking that this is what we're gonna do when we got there um it, it, what the Lord asked us to do was completely different than what the Lord did in his life and his family um, family life. I want, to, I want him to share share from his experience. Um, Pastor Brown, if, if you, you want to go ahead and, and share. Hi, morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody in the UK, joining all over the world, wherever you are pastor and his family um it's such an awesome privilege for us to be with you this morning um 
as Pastor Wesley was sharing there, I, I had such wonderful memories. And uh, I'm, in my heart, I, I felt some things welling up in my heart and my spirit because as, as we remember the, the, the work and what God has been doing over the years, it brings back such 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 wonderful memories and we and there are things that are precious to us, things that the Holy Spirit had shared with us that are so precious to us that it has shaped our lives into what it is today. And um, past, as Pastor West, you were sharing about the beginnings. I remember the first time I, I joined the, the Passion for Souls team was in the year 2008. Now, now I want to say this, you know, um, <laughs> don't take this the wrong way. But the, the first time I joined Passion for Souls in 2008, I, I was a totally, completely different person. And as a matter of fact, Wesley could testify, he almost didn't carry me back <laughs> because the type of person I, 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 I was back then, you know, and, um, you know, it was just everything just raw and uncut and, you know, every, everything about me was just all over the place and in such disorder. But I, I want you to know that when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you are transformed into a different person. You are, you are, you are changed into a new man. And as I was, as I was reflecting, I, I, I reflected on something that Samuel said to Saul. And uh, there are some good parts of Saul's life that you can glean from. Um, Samuel said to him, he said in 1 Samuel chapter 10 and verse 6, he says, And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them. And he said to him, And thou shalt be turned into another man. And my experience over the years, I can safely say I've been turned into another man. And uh, there's, as Pastor was saying, uh, passion for souls really doesn't come from, from, from what you have learned in school or, or, or what you have you've sat and, and, you know, just by interaction with people. Passion for souls come from the Holy Spirit because there's no way you can draw close to the heart of God and don't really feel his heart beat and feel what he desires and what he longs for and what he, you know, what he pursues. And you as well, you adopt that same thing. You, you, you pursue that. The, the, apost the, the people of the day, they knew that the apostles were with Christ when they saw how they operated and how they moved. They saw the same passion. They saw the same anointing. They saw the same zeal. And uh, I, I remember when as pastor was speaking about uh, when we went to 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 venezuela now i for, for years in, in in college i i it, it was mandatory in, in it is mandatory in trinidad to learn spanish in the schools but i never learned it as a matter of fact i and my teacher we didn't get along too well so i always had a, a i always disliked spanish and some, sometimes, sometimes God really plays a good trick on you because you, what you don't like and you, normally what you naturally was something that you don't like, you, you learn to appreciate sometimes when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And uh, I, I, I remember telling my teacher one day, I said, I will not have to use Spanish in my life. I said, I will not have to use it. And... Uh, I remember when I got the call to go to, to Venezuela, we had just came back from Colombia. I'll, I'll just fast forward a little bit. We went to a mission trip in Colombia. And I said, and everyone were, were, was receiving word from the Lord and everyone felt something powerful. And everyone we, we just been to this powerful revival meeting and so on. And I came back and I said, Lord, I, like, I didn't receive anything. And uh, when we came back, uh, the Holy Spirit spoke to me, said, I wanted to go on three days of prayer and fasting. And when I went to the three days of prayer and fasting, home in my, right, right in my, my living room, I had a visitation from the Lord and the Lord spoke to me to go to Venezuela. And uh, fast forward that a bit. 
when after when we when I we got into Venezuela, my wife and I, I took my wife, my 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 daughter, my first daughter. She was about 18 months at the time. And it wasn't convenient for us to go to Venezuela. It, it was very difficult. As a matter of fact, every, contrary to all the encouragement of my family, everyone said, here what, don't go to Venezuela. Don't go to that mission field. Don't go because the, that place is so dangerous and, there, and there's so many reasons not to go. But the passion and the desire that God had for me, I knew it because of my encounter with the Holy Spirit. Still not able to speak Spanish, but I had a word from the Lord to go, and that is so important. Yes, Where, whereby you're at a place where the word of the Lord to you is much, has, has a much, um, is more potent than, than, what, than the words that, that someone else said to you, or what the people around me have said to you. The apostle says better that we obey God rather than man. And uh, when I got to, to Venezuela with my wife and my daughter, together with Pastor Wesley and his wife and his first son, the Lord spoke to us, and we still have these watchwords today. We have, I, I don't know if you can see this, but right here in my house, I have this um, that they have painted for me. I, 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 don't, ever, I don't ever move it from, from our living room. It says, inquire, listen, and obey. And uh, I have a rock. One day the Holy Spirit spoke to me while I was on, on, on a mountain. And I, I took up a rock as a testimony of what God said to me. And I wrote on the rock, inquire, listen, and obey. And while we were there, the whole, we, we got into the presence of the Lord. And, and, and the Lord had us sit down and, and learn some things, some intimate things about him. And who he is and his character and what he loves and how he how he speaks and learn how he speaks and just learn to be obedient to him. I remember Pastor Wesley had to make a trip uh, to, to another city and we were all heading to, to this particular city. And the Lord said to me, Kurt, I want you and your wife to stay back a little bit. And uh, I obeyed the voice of God. I spoke to Pastor Wesley. I said, Pastor Wesley, you go on ahead to the other city and we're going to catch up with you. And uh, there... I, I, I learned to seek God for myself and learn to, to really find him wherever I am, even in the midst of dark situations, to find him and to know where he is and to know that he is with us. Sometimes, sometimes we're at a place where our support is taken away because Pastor Wesley was my interpreter as well to speak. And I would depend on him. As a matter of fact, he, if we have to buy something, if we have to you know, share something with someone. We'll we'll call him to translate, and he was like the Google Translate all day. And and uh, but it wasn't the plan of God that Wesley be, be my crutch, uh, my 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 walking stick. It was the plan of God that I would encounter him for myself. And I took, and one day when and and as we got to the other city and we connected, I was coming from, a, from, from one place where, whereby my relationship with God grew and my prayer closet, I, I learned how to seek God in, in, in the midst of dark situations and, and how to, to, to connect with him wherever we are. I remember when Pastor Wesley had to go back to Trinidad and I, I'm going to get to the meat of what I'm saying. When he had to return to Trinidad, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, I, can, I want you to go to this particular city you and your wife and, and you and your family. And when we got to that city, a city in Venezuela by the name of El Callao, still don't know much Spanish. I can only speak 10 words of Spanish. And I said, and I remember the morning we were staying at this pastor's home. And at, at my, in my devotion in the morning, I, I remember the Holy Spirit said to me, Kern, I want you to start to preach the gospel in the streets. And I said to the Holy Spirit, I said, but Holy Spirit, I can't preach the gospel. And, and, and this, this part, I want those who you may be living with a faith that, that, that you're not well equipped for the work. I want you to know your, your, your relationship with the Holy Spirit will allow you to be, will, 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 will allow you to be equipped for what he has called you to be, to do and to be. And uh, that morning I had a hard time trying, 
with the Holy Spirit. I said, Holy Spirit, you're going to send me to preach, but I don't know how to preach in Spanish. And he said, Kun, who made languages? And I said, I said, I said, Lord, you made language. And uh, he said, well, go ahead, preach. And I remember Pastor West and, and to all the listeners out there, I had a hard time trying to explain to the, to, to the pastor who I was staying at that I'm going to preach the gospel on the streets. And he told me, the, the only thing I understood that he said, he said, go with God. And uh, I told my wife, I said, let us go. And um, we got into the streets and we went into this open plaza where the Holy Spirit directed us to go. And ladies and gentlemen, when I got there, I looked up towards the heavens and I said, I said, Lord, I said, I reach. I said, I've reached the place where you told me to come. And everything that I've done up to this day is what you have told me to do. I, I said it like, like Elijah. And I said, today, God, I fulfill my end. I said, Lord, where are you? And I remember right in my ear, I heard it. Deep within my spirit, I heard the voice of God say, open your mouth. Open your mouth. And ladies and gentlemen, if you read the book of Acts and, you, and, and, and for some reason or the other, you felt that the book of Acts isn't relevant today, or, or there's some doctrine lingering in your spirit that what occurred back then is only for back then. I'm, I'm a living testimony, and Wesley as well, that what we've read is, it can be fulfilled even in your time, your time. And uh, I remember when the Holy Spirit said to us, open your mouth. My wife speaks Spanish a little bit, but she had a hard time even understanding what the people were saying because you will realize Spanish in the schools is totally different from Spanish out on the streets. And I, I said to my wife, there's a, there's a group of people there. We're going to go and we're going to preach to them. And as we got to that group of people, I took that step of faith and I opened my mouth and it was like a supernatural. I, I, I cannot even explain all the dynamics of this. A supernatural download came into my spirit. My, my mind, my mouth was filled with Spanish. Don't know where it came from. I knew who it came from, but how it got there, I don't know. And uh, the power of God filled my mouth. And I remember speaking Spanish to, and preaching the gospel. Now, it's one thing to, to, to speak Spanish, but it's another thing to articulate the gospel. And uh, I, I remember being, starting to articulate the gospel and declaring who Jesus Christ is. And I remember, and, and you will recall the, 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 the people of the day back in the book of Acts, they heard the gospel in, in their language. They didn't hear the guys just chattering and just speaking any and anything. They heard the gospel of Jesus Christ in their language, the good news. They heard it. And that is the exact thing that occurred with us. By this time, my wife as well, she received the same thing and she started to understand supernaturally everything the people were saying. All of a sudden, I begin to understand everything they were saying to me supernaturally and conversation was taking place. By this time, we preached to that group of people. We preached. We, we went to the military. We saw the police on the streets. We began to preach to the police on the streets. We, anyone we could have found on the street that day, they couldn't escape. We had to preach to everyone. And I tell you the truth. When the Spirit of God comes upon you, in a mighty and powerful way, there's a passion and there's a zeal. There's a boldness as well that comes upon you that, 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 that in your human ability and strength, you could have never found. And as we began to preach and it, it confirmed our faith, it confirmed the, the things that God has spoken to us. And I remember that day, ladies and gentlemen, I went back home to the pastor's home. And I remember going before God and I, I cried, I cried, I cried. If, you have re if I've read the Bible just as for historical reference before, now I was living the pages of the Bible. And that is so important. The, you can read the word of God and you can have, no, you can have no, no great conviction of what you have read. But I tell you the truth, your encounter with the Holy Spirit can shift everything in your life. And that day, something shifted in me. That day, something shifted in me. All of the plan of God became much clearer to me. And what is the call of God upon my life? 
And as I began to speak to the people and I began to share a greater passion and desire and zeal and boldness came upon me. And I remember when I came back home to Trinidad, I said, Lord, why am I coming back home to Trinidad? Because I'm seeing the power of God at, at work in Venezuela. We are going into communities and hundreds of people are giving their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. We, we, we went into to, to, to communities and there are cases, and this is no exaggeration, demons would be crying and coming out of people as supernaturally with deliverance on the streets, the open streets. Persons are giving their heart to the Lord in the open streets. And, and I said, Lord, why are you bringing me back to Trinidad? And these words came back to us, inquire, listen, and obey. It, 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 it. These are our watchwords in the ministry. And, uh, but we knew the voice of God, and we knew that God told us to come back. And that's so important in the mission. You must hear the, hear the voice of God. You must in, inquire of him of what you might think is the finest detail or the smallest thing. Inquire of him. And this is a daily walk with God. And I remember when we came back home to Trinidad, we, my wife and I, we, we continued seeking the Lord. And one day the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And you all would know that Venezuela is, is, is in a very challenging situation. And Trinidad's close proximity to Venezuela is less than seven kilometers. And I, I remember the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, I want you to begin to reach out to the community reach out to the community. And as we began to reach out to the community, the plan of God became much clearer. Today, my wife and I, we serve as, 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 the, as the pastors of many Latin Americans here in Trinidad and Tobago. As a matter of fact, it, it's, it's, it, it's, sometimes when I reflect on it, it, it seems as if God did this work in such a short space of time. And sometimes it seems as if, you know, if it was like just yesterday, and uh, when I look at passion and zeal, I look at the people getting saved and delivered every week. Uh, this is no exaggeration. Every week I see salvation of souls. And uh, God, the Spirit of the Lord, wants to bring your life into a level of fruitfulness. Fruitfulness. That is so important. Jesus still requires fruit of your life today. I know that if you would allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you and you open your life and be available to him, be totally surrendered to him. Your life is going to take a supernatural turn, just as he did it for me, just as he did for Pastor Wesley and so many others who are probably looking on here today, just as he did for us. You're going to see the same thing. The Bible is not just for historical reference, as I close, but the Bible, the word of God, brings life here today. It can bring life into your new God bless you today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And so I tell you, I tell you, this is what this is what we want to we want to transmit to you today. Um, a passion for souls that comes from from deep encounters with him and, and baptism of the Holy Spirit that really and um, I'm, I'm sure Pastor Brown would, would um, he, he was saying this and, and maybe he didn't say it directly. But when the spirit of the Lord came upon him, I'm sure he would be able to testify what we are talking about today, uh, the, the, his, his burden for souls would have been, would have been from here and increase. Isn't that, that, that right? Um, I, I mean, I, I could, have, could see it. That's absolutely in, in, right. Yeah. And, and, and as the, your passion for souls would have been, um, totally taken to a different level after that encounter with the Lord. Yeah. And yeah. so, um, definitely, this is, definitely. This is what we are talking about, um, how he, he comes down upon us and he ignites our passion. And today we're going to believe God that all of us, and, and you know, I tell you, it's something that as the more we spend time in him, and so our, our church, the churches that we have, we've started in the Amazon, you know, the names of our churches is, is, is passion for his presence, right? And so the mission ministry is passion for souls and the church is called passion for his presence. And it's because of that, because a passion for his presence and a passion for soul, they go together. As, as we are encounter him, I tell you, something happens in our lives that we don't see people the same. And so um, 
Rami, I don't know how our time is going. I don't know if we still have time that I could shoot. Um, we have time. We have time. Okay, great. So I wanted I wanted to show you just one or two videos um, before we do anything else, just so, so that you can get have a a visual of some of the things that we've been talking about. Um, we have not been very um, been I would say good stewards of of recording everything and um we have not uh, many times we get so caught up that um uh, many times when i look for the cameraman he's somewhere on the floor <laughs> and we and sometimes I, I all of our trips i've had the same struggle i said this one okay you are in charge of videotaping everything and when i look for that person they lay hands on somebody or something and and, and so we have many of, of of the stuff that that has taken place we have missed but um we pray that that would change in the near future but we do have some footage that um of of some some very very interesting times that we had on the mission feel that i want to share with you some of them um the first one is 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 um it was a compilation that I did of a trip that we did to Venezuela in 2017. And, and, and I tell you, it was in really, really in the height of, of a lot of stuff. And we did a lot of prayer, a lot of fasting to go there. The people there, they warned us, they told us, do not go. They, they, they themselves needed the help. And they said, listen, you all don't come. We don't really want foreigners with, with US dollars here right now. It will be dangerous for you for you and so we went and it was the middle of love of presidential elections right and 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 so we went we went there in obedience to the lord with a team and um and the lord had, had us to go in so in a lot of dangerous places a lot of places with a lot of needs and um i just wanted to, wanted to show you that that video right now of what of what the lord did all right so i'm going to share my screen with you all just give me a sec you are getting audio right jesus said wait for the promise of the father and when the holy spirit comes upon you you will become witnesses to the ends of the earth. It is when he carries us that we have no fear. Perfect love casts out fear. Maybe he will carry you to the dark places where they have lost all hope, to the destitute, the naked, the hungry, the thirsty, the lost, the abandoned ones, the forgotten ones, the hopeless ones. Perfect love knows no boundaries. Language barriers are broken down. We become his hands and his feet. For I was hungry and you gave food to me. I was thirsty and you gave me to drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous said, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you the drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer, Inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, Cada vez que 
que ustedes vienen nos motivan, nos motivan a seguir adelante, a luchar y, y que, y que nos, 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 nos crean conciencia, nos crean conciencia para que nosotros cuando salgamos de este lugar salgamos a hacer el bien, a, a, salgamos renovados en un nuevo hombre, una nueva criatura, porque la palabra de Dios dice que de manera si de, de, de manera que si alguno está en Cristo nueva criatura es, las cosas bien pasaron, más todas son hechas nuevas por el Señor. Amén. Amén. Que Dios lo bendiga, que Dios le siga multiplicando todo lo que hace por nosotros y que nunca le falte el pan en su hogar. Amén. Amén. He sido mucho con los varones que nos traen, aparte de una bendición alimenticia, nos traen la palabra de Dios Amén. que mucho nos hace falta. No, no, nos da la oportunidad de vida. Amén. Agradecido con ustedes. Que mi Señor Jehová multiplique sus bendiciones en sus casas y en sus familias en grande amén, medio. Amén. Amén. De verdad que Dios ha hecho una cuestión demasiado fuerte conmigo. Soy un hincha más de la calle. Eh, una vez que llegué aquí a la iglesia me ayudaron. Hoy, como pueden ver, me regalaron ropa. Soy una nueva persona. Ahorita confío más en Dios que en mi propia familia. Mi familia me llevan la espalda. Pero ahí, pues, luchando. Y todos los días pido a Dios cambio y dirección. Me gustaría ser pastor de jóvenes, llevo un ministerio también. Bueno, me gustaría llegar cada día más, ya más a la persona de la calle, que es lo que me enfoco. Así como salí yo de la calle, espero que lo demás me salga. Praise his name, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And you know that that's just a, a little um, <clears throat> just a little compilation of of you know just some of the things and you know even as I as as I look at at it there's so so many um so many memories of of every 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 little scene that sometimes you see there is <clears throat> it, it, there's so much so much breakthrough and so much testimonies behind it, behind it. You know, um, you know, when I look at that boat loaded up with food, that's that little fishing boat. Um, <laughs> we 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 believe in God. The Lord, we were on a forty-day fast, my wife and I, and the Lord told us to begin to 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 carry food to Venezuela. Now, for years we have been preaching the gospel. We've never taken food there because um, it is is always difficult to take food to Venezuela because of all the all the red tape, all of the, the customs problems and, and the 
they would steal the food and all kind of stuff. So we never, um, we never would take food to Venezuela. And so the Lord told us, the Lord gave us his word, feed my people in Venezuela. And so things, the inflation rate was just escalating. Um, Venezuela has the highest inflation rate in the world. And, um, and so everything, prices of food is, to, is just unreachable for the people. And um, one of the, right now where I am in Colombia, they are, <clears throat> just yesterday we were feeding people, I just to tell you, because in Colombia, we, we are like about eight, eight hours away from the Venezuelan border. And um, people cross the border every single day, hundreds and hundreds of people. I've been here for two years, almost two years, and every single day, People are crossing the border from Venezuela into Colombia, walking with their families, and we would see them. They would pass in front of the road right here. I don't even have to go to Venezuela to minister to the Venezuelan people. It's right here, and and um, and just yes, just yesterday, this, this is something that has to be now is now part of our lives. We leave home and we carry um, we carry food. We minister to the people, um, the people from Venezuela. They're walking. They are walking with their children, and. Um, walking with their children, with their babies, and walking for, now when I say eight hours, I'm saying eight hours drive, right? For them, that's days of walking over mountains and cold, and many of them have died on this journey of this mass, like, you know, and, and so it, 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 there's a, the, the needs are so, are so great when it comes to there's a lot and so when i look at, i was going let me go back to what i was talking about like with the boats there and the lord told us to feed people and, and i was like lord how are we going to do this and the, the, the lord spoke to us the following day someone called me and said i have three bags of rice no i said bag like the big 45 kilo kilogram um rice which is like a hundred pound um bag of rice and they brought it to my home and he said, this is for Venezuela. Now, we had never done that before. And so it's like, all right, Lord, you spoke to us. And now you just send somebody with all this rice here. How are we going to get this? And I remember um, Pastor Brown, myself, we, we entered into prayer. This was probably like June of, June of 2016. And we are praying. And, and we're trying to get, get the, the food across to Venezuela. And all the doors were closed. All the doors were closed. We, the, the, we boats that would usually go um, from Trinidad to Venezuela because of the situation. They, there were no boats going to Venezuela. Um, the cargoes, no, none of them were going. And they would just have some. They started to have. We started to have fishing boats coming from Venezuela to Trinidad. Um, with people trying to come across and through the borders and and and, and come through the back door, as you would say. And so a lot of a lot of um we had a lot of that starting to take place that time 2015 2016 and but legally we couldn't um, find boats that would take that would take stuff from here to there none of the Trinidadian boats was going across there right <laughs> um and so we were praying and we were meeting with people and we were meeting with the with with different boats that used to go and and, and all of that and then a lot of prayer and um i remember when you saw that you saw the image with the man with that with those those bags of rice standing next to the bags of rice um i'll, I'll just give you this story and, and then we're gonna pray um i remember we're praying we're praying and we're saying lord open the way make a way and one day we were speaking to a venezuelan woman we went to preach at a bilingual service my wife and i and we was and she was just talking about all the needs in Venezuela. So we came home. We said, "Lord, open the door," and we started to pray again. Now, this these three bags of rice were behind my couch in my living room, probably about three months, and we had been praying, right, to, for a way to get it across. My family, Kurt's family, we have been praying and trying, knocking on every door. And I remember while we were praying, I felt the spirit of the Lord come upon us in in that room and well and, and our prayer shifted right it shifted from lord make a way 
Um, we've been praying for this for a long time and I went and I got up and I went to the back of the couch and dragged those bags that rise out into the middle of my living room. And my wife and I just prostrated over the bag of rice and started to, to, to weep and weep and just cry out and say, Lord, open the door for Venezuela, Lord. And it was a cry from the inside that I, it was, I didn't even know where it was coming from. It was not me. This is what we are talking about today. It was a, it was a burden that is in the heart of God. It was his passion, his burden. And I want you to know we are not begging God. He is looking for the intercessor. He is looking for the missionary. He is more concerned about souls than you and I. He is the one who loves them. He is the one that wants to make a way. He is the one looking for a missionary, somebody. He is the one in Isaiah chapter 6. He is not, he, he, he wasn't just speaking um, specifically. It was almost as if there were, Isaiah was in the midst of a conversation. And God is saying, who will go for us? Whom shall I send? And Isaiah said, Lord, send me. God is the one looking for this person. Uh, for you and I who would, who, would, who would reach the lost souls that are around us. And so I started to weep. My wife started to weep over this bag of rice. And we, I realized that it was the groanings of the Holy Spirit. And we were praying and saying, Lord, open a way, make a way. And it was in a couple of days that Pastor Brown and myself were in Venezuela. The doors just broke open. And the Lord provided the boat. The Lord provided everything to get to Venezuela. We sent the, the boat, the food on the boat, and we went by plane. And, um, and, 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 and it was a whole lot of stuff that happened. And we ended up getting to a cruise. We had a crusade and we were able to, 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 to feed a lot of people and bless the churches there. And, um, and that was the beginning of a lot of different outreaches like that. But it, 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 the doors opened through, through, through not our prayer, not our prayer. This is what I, what, what I want us to receive. Our prayer had to, be, had to be transformed in a connection with the spirit of the Lord, where it says, we ourselves, you know, we, the Bible says that we don't know what to pray for. But the spirit makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered with words. Oh, how he loves his people and how he is seeking after intercessors, missionaries who would just rise up and feel what he feels. And so I want, to, I want us to pray today. I want us to pray today and, and, and let's just, just believe God. That he would download not just upon us but but the passion that he gives us would be ignited in everyone we come into contact with this is my prayer this is my prayer and this is this is this is um this is what we we believe as as a ministry that we would we would be able to ignite a passion for souls in the hearts of people so that you don't go on the mission field because of duty or because of anything else you go because you feel what he feels. You love his people today. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for ministering to our hearts today. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your children that are here. I thank you, Lord God, Father, because you have called us. You have called us. And just like you said, you said to Simon, in John chapter 21, he said, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said, feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Father, would we rise up, oh God, today and feel what you feel. And our love for you would give us a love for your people today. Our passion for you would give us a passion for souls today. I declare even right now that you would, you would, you would, you would, you would impart to every person connected here today a passion for souls as never before. Not a concern, not just a, not just a concern because we, we are moved by what we see around us or we're looking at the news or people suffering. 
This is not about being sad. This is not about, about anything like that. It's about, it is about our passion that connects with your heart and our burden to make a difference. Our burden to go forth and to preach your gospel. Regardless of the consequences or the obstacles, we would preach your gospel in obedience to you based on the passion that you have placed in our hearts compassion for the people around us that are lost oh lord father i declare in the name of jesus we'll never look at people the same again i declare in the name of jesus that we'll find a way to reach them we'll find a way oh lord father to see them delivered to see them to see them set free we would not want to see them continue in the bondage and the hunger and the thirst and 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 and, and being lost anymore but lord father we would do our part in the mighty name of jesus Lord God, right now, right now in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for doing it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.